In this video, I'm going to be looking at the underlined concept behind um, SF6, SF6 and BF, BF6 forming the structure that they do, forming the molecule that they do. And if you see my last video, I said that uh, these two don't exactly follow the octet rule, which uh, the other ones seem to seem to follow. Now, there's a lot more molecules that actually don't follow the octet rule. And the reasons for this is to do with uh, increased stability, which I'm 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 going to explain in this video. Now let's take BF six first of all and look at what actually happens to cause this to form. Oh no, no, not BF six, BF BF three, sorry, BF three, BF three. Yeah. Uh, so first, I'm going to take a look at BF three and look at what happens uh, to cause this to to form this. Now, boron, if we take a look at an atom of boron now, an atom of boron, so boron is here, and it has five electrons. So since it has five electrons, it's gonna have uh, five minus two, three outer electrons. So if we have, imagine this is boron, it's gonna have, It's going to have three outer electrons so it's going to have um, one is going to be a lone pair uh, 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 two are going to form a lone pair and one is going to be an un unpaired electron and from looking at this you would expect boron to just form one bond so one bond here with um, maybe a uh, fluorine or something else but boron tends to not like doing this doing this Yes, when it do, when it if it does do this, uh, some energy is released and it becomes more stable. But there is a more stable arrangement which boron prefers, and this involves forming three bonds instead of two. And uh, since boron has uh, only three electrons in its outer shell, uh, it the maximum number of bonds that it can form, the maximum number of covalent bonds it can form is three. And the reason why it doesn't form ionic bonds is because if we were to take this electron off and take this electron off and take this electron off, we'd be putting a lot of energy into this system, into the uh, atom. And this energy is not going to be recovered when the ionic bond forms. And so we don't do that because uh, it would be unstable, more unstable than it is in, in right now. So we don't do that. So rather, we form covalent bonds instead using uh, using some reason what I'm going to explain in this video. So, in order to explain what uh, the concept that I want to explain, and I haven't named it the concept which we not be named. I will, I will, I will, I will name it. What? Let me draw out the electron, uh, an electron, and an not electron, an energy level diagram now. So. If we were to take a look at the energy levels involved in boron, first of all, we'd have the 1s, and this would have two orbitals. Well, no, two electrons. Electrons. And then the 2s orbital, 2s, which would have two electrons as well. Uh, opposite spin, so that would go, yeah. And then... Instead of drawing the 2p up here, which I did in a previous video, what I'll do is I'll draw it up next to the 2s, slightly above, because 2, 2p is in reality not that much higher than 2s. Uh, but what I shall do is I'll drag the 2, the 1s orbital slightly down a bit, so that it's sort of more to, to scale of what actually... Yeah, I'll put the 1s down here. So as you can see, there's not much of a big jump between this as the jump here. And now if I draw the two p orbitals now, so two p orbitals. So this is a two p subshell. There's one electron in here because boron has a uh, boron has five electrons in total. Now the two ideas which I said um I was not yet naming, but I will now name are. The two concepts are hybridization, hybridization, and electron promotion. 
electron promotion and hybridization is basically the idea of different kinds of orbitals combining um, or mixing and when they mix they, they form a uh, they form orbitals which are more suitable for sharing electrons. So they form orbit, they form new orbitals which are more suitable for covalent bonding. And I'll go into this uh, further after I've gone into electron promotion, which is before the hybridization. So electron promotion is something which happens to help the hybridization process to actually happen. So anyway, looking at this structure the way it is right now, uh we would expect only one bond to be able to form and uh, it would increase the stability of the atom but if it was to form three bonds then since energy is released when bonds are made if it was to form three bonds a lot of energy would be released and so this would be even more stable but as you can see with the current uh, electron configuration only one can be formed so boron has a trick up, up its sleeve because it knows that if it was to form three bonds, it would be more stable than if it was to form one bond. And so it has a trick up its sleeve. And this trick is it involves both electron promotion and hybridization. So what boron does is, first of all, this electron, it takes in a little bit of energy. So it becomes slightly more unstable. But bearing, it, bearing in mind the fact that afterwards it's going to be more stable. So it takes in a little bit of energy and this energy is used to promote this electron because ele electrons need energy to go to high energy levels so this electron you see here is promoted and it promotes it up to the 2p orbital the 2p uh well this could be um any orbital but yeah it promotes it to a 2p orbital that is empty and so this is gonna this orbit this electron is gonna disappear from here and it's gonna appear here in this 2p orbital oh no wrong color yeah it's going to appear here in this 2p orbital and so as you can see looking at this now we've got three uh orbitals which have unpaired electrons in them and these are slightly more suitable for bonding now but the what boron does is it goes a step further and so the, what it does is these two uh, orbitals uh, combine so they mix up and they form new orbitals and these new orbitals are we call them hybridized orbitals so what will happen is this orbital and this orbital and this orbital will will merge together to form a new set of orbitals which are at uh, equal energy level so presumably it would be somewhere in between these two. So it would be like here. Let me draw a, a purple line on this one to represent that it's a new one. And this new orbital formed would be uh, uh, S. Since we have one uh, electron from an S orbital, we have, first of all, we write S. So it's an S orbital. And we have two electrons from a P orbital. So we, we write the P. And we need to show that there's two electrons. So remember from electron configuration, if there's two electrons in the p orbitals, we write two. So this is what we write. We write sp2. And so this is what, what notation we use for this, this particular new hybridized orbital. So sp2 hybridized orbital. And this orbital, it contains three electrons. So one, two, three. And these electrons are now quite suitable for bonding. And as you can see, now we have, uh, since those are four hybridized, clearly they wouldn't be here anymore. So no, I'll just cross this out. So these would take part in the, the bonding and through the bonding between the these uh, electrons, it would form the BF3 that you, that you know. So B, B, F. So BF3. So he, so here we'd have the electrons, 
uh, yeah so the yellow ones are from boron and the uh, orange one uh, bleh, the red ones are from fluorine so fluorine would have uh in addition to those electrons it would have some electrons around here and leaving this alone for for a while for now uh, what I want to take a look at just just quickly is this uh, what this would actually look like the sp3 hybridized orbitals now if you're familiar with bond angles you would know that the bond the electrons tend to move away from each other as much as possible within the the um, within the uh, outer uh, regions of this atom so around the atom the central atom and so you can imagine that the biggest angle they could have since there's three is basically going to be since this is a circle and the circles have 360 degrees it's going to be 360 divided by three so if you did that you'd probably you'd you'd find out what what these angles are going to be anyway the sp the sp2 hybridized orbital is going to have a shape uh somewhat like this so we'd have the boron in the middle so i'll just represent it as a dot actually and then we'd have actually we'd have three orbitals so we'd have this orbital here this orbital here and this orbital here and i'm not just i'm not i'm not going to write the s orbital from the 1s on there but it would look something like that and we'd have the electron so one electron per orbital this would be the sp2 hybridized orbital so now the similar a similar thing and this when it forms this and forms the bonds it's it's more stable like this it's more stable than it would be if it just formed the one bond so now if we take a look now at sf6 sf6 a very 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 similar thing happens so we have the energy levels we have the 1s i wouldn't draw the 1s stuff because it doesn't take part in the bonding the only part of it that takes part in the sf6 bonding is the energy energy uh, is the electrons in the in the third energy level or one of the third principal quantum number so we have the 3s orbital oh, the 3s orbital the uh, 3p orbital and the 3d orbital and so we have these this one four so we have electrons in here and for the 3p we have wait for the for the 1s 1s2 2s2 3 2p6 so we have down here we have 10 electrons and sulfur has a total of 16 16 um electrons so we're gonna have six more so one two uh three four five and then since there's more space we're going to have one in the opposite spin six so now we've got all 16 and uh, electrons and as you can see the 3d right now is empty there's no electrons in there but i've just drawn it because of what's going to happen next so we've got one two three four five six so what happened if you look at this right now you presumably sulfur would only really form like two bonds since we've got two electrons and like oxygen does since it's in the same group as oxygen you see it's just below oxygen we'd expect it maybe to form just two bonds but this is not the case sulfur sulfur would be more stable in this in with six bonds than with just two bonds since more energy is released uh six bonds if six bonds are formed than the energy released if two bonds are formed and so the way sulfur forms those extra bonds is by electron promotion again so this electron is promoted up to this level here so this is electron electron promotion and this electron you can see here is also promoted so this one is promoted to this energy level and this is, uh, I'll just write EP, so EP, electron promotion. So two electrons are promoted, and if I just uh, erase them from where they were previously, so they're not going to be there anymore. We have now electron, an electron here, and an electron here. 
So now we have uh, a total of one, two, three, four, five, six electrons. And we've got six unpaired electrons now. And so to, to increase the stability of this, what happens is the hybridization. So these all merge, uh, they all mix together and form a new energy level, which is going to be uh, somewhere in between the, the energy levels previously. And since the p orbital has the most electrons, it'll probably be somewhere near closer closer to the p uh, electric p level, the level of the p p orbitals. So it'll probably be around here. And this is going to have six orbitals. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And each of these orbitals is going to have one electron in it. And this is a new hybridized orbital which we've created to, for the purpose of the covalent bonding. And the name of this orbital we use, uh, we get from the, the this stuff. Just like we named the other one, the, the, the one from BF3, we're going to name it in a similar way. So we're going to have three, uh, well, we could just leave the energy level there if you want to. So three uh, P. And there's only one there, so we don't need to put a number right now. I'll just leave it like that. But we've got... F uh, oh, no. I must be sleepy because I just... Anyway, 3S. This is going to be 3S. And and then there's going to be P. So we're going to have SP. And since there's three e electrons from the P, or three, from the P subshell, we're going to have SP3. And D is going to be... Uh, D2, since we have two electrons from the D subshell, D2. Since we're just describing the orbital, uh, like new orbitals and not actually uh, necessarily a subshell, but yeah. So since we're describing this, this is what we would name it, SP3D2. I'm not sure if it's correct to put the energy level there, uh, but this would be correct. SP3D2, this is the sort of the, the, the code name for this new orbital form, this one here. So it's a sp3d2 hybridized orbital and what this will do is just like the boron trifluoride does it will form bonds with the uh the six fluorine atoms so it would have you'd have s we'd have f f f f Yeah, so we'd have these F's here. It's going to be take a while to draw the electrons on, so I'm not going to draw the electrons. And this is going to have an octa octahedral shape. Because if I was to draw the uh, electrons from this onto onto an actual, like, representing the electrons. So if I was to draw a graph, so... Remember the XYZ graph of the shapes of orbitals. If I was to draw an XYZ graph, what this would look like if I drew the S sulfur and just its orbitals, we'd have sulfur here. And if I draw its orbitals in red, we'd have one orbital here, one orbital here, one orbital here, one orbital here, and one orbital here, and one orbital here. So as you can see, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six. And if we were to join the ends of this uh, orbital, so to join this end and join that end and that end and that end and that end and that end. And then we did that for all of them. So like, whoops. So if we basically made a, uh, a shape of what it looks like. What we would find that is that the shape produced is an. It has eight faces. So. Anyway, I'm not gonna go along and uh, draw all of the this stuff, but bear in mind that this will have eight faces if we were to draw out the structure of it. So we say it's an octahedral structure. I, I don't mean to um, um, get get carried away by all of this stuff. So I'm just going to end this video now. So yeah, see you guys next video. This is basically how, how, how it works.